Hello wild people. Welcome to AK Wild One. Behind me is Alaska's majestic Copper River. And today, let's go fishing. Hey, thank you everyone for joining us in this episode. We're headed down the hill to the community fish wheel and we're hoping to see, be surprised with a whole bunch of Alaska's wonderful red salmon. Copper River red salmon are famous across the world. Back east I've seen uh, Alaska salmon fillets. Copper River salmon fillets go for $60 a pound. And uh, our hope is that we've got a bunch of fish down there in the fish wheel. So let's go check it out. Every Memorial Day, about 10 to 20 community members come here and we launch the fish wheel. And then uh, all throughout the summer we sign up for days on the fish wheel. And I have these two days. I'm the first one actually on the fish wheel this year. And uh, should be a great experience. It's a pretty steep hill, about 30 switchbacks. And it can be slippery going down. And then you usually, if you're lucky, you'll be carrying a big load of fish back up the hill. Fish wheels were introduced to Alaska during the gold rush. In this area, they were introduced during the uh, 1898 Valdez gold rush that brought a few thousand miners into the region. And apparently, I haven't been able to track down the exact country of origin, but uh, fish wheels were of European in nature, from what I've heard. And they're an ingenious contraption that harnesses the power of the river to turn a wheel that basically and has two has two sets of paddles and a couple of baskets and a fish hold and it's just kind of an ingenious little contraption. It's pretty amazing. It's a lot of work to put in a fish wheel, a lot of work to maintain them, but uh, they can really up your fish production. When the salmon are running, a good fish wheel can catch 300 fish a day, which is not, I really don't want to catch 300 fish. It'll take me, it'll take my son and I forever to fillet those fish, that many fish. Between 60 and 80,000 fish, Copper River Reds and Kings, mostly Copper River Reds, are caught in the fish wheels every year. More than a million salmon make their way up this beautiful Copper River which extends for about 290 miles or so. The fish that we're hoping to catch today will have swam about 120 miles. This region is home to the Atna Athabascans and the Copper River got its name because of the rich copper deposits found higher up on the river, on the upper river. And uh, copper was used, of course, uh, by the Alaska natives, by the Atna. They used it for tools like creating knives and they also traded with the coastal natives. Copper was a hot commodity back then. And then of course, uh, the Kennecott mine came on scene in 1911, 1938. I believe all five species, oh, this is steep right here. Pacific salmon make their way up the Copper River, but Primarily what we'll see are reds, which are also known as sockeyes. We might catch a king, they're also known as chinooks. And later on in the season, uh, the silvers or cohos spawn their way up the, the river. Copper River reds are famous for their red flesh, their uh, omega-3 fatty acids. The fish are very fat because some of them have to travel 300 miles. Once the salmon enter the fresh freshwater to return to spawn uh, they don't eat anything and so they need to build up their fat reserves and those fat reserves are really healthy for us humans too so first of all like i said you get those omega-3 fatty acids you also have you know fish are a rich source of protein the salmon are also rich in antioxidants such as taurine and they're loaded full of vitamin vitamin b12 copper river reds are also rich sources of selenium which is good for uh, 
maintaining and improving brain function, which uh, certainly doesn't hurt a few of us. So basically the Copper River Reds, they average from four to six pounds, but this time of year, you might even catch bigger reds. They, they tend to trend a little bigger early in the season, so I'm really excited to see if we've caught anything down here at the fish wheel. We set it running yesterday, and uh, we're hoping to find our holds full of, full of Copper River Reds. Flash and I will vacuum seal these fish, and then we'll freeze them, and then enjoy them throughout the winter. You know, I'm always blown away by how generous and rich a country Alaska is. I can catch all this uh, beautiful, these beautiful fish that are healthy, organic. Then um, in the fall, I usually go out and hunt and uh, shoot a moose. And so really, that's pretty much all the meat I need. You know, get, I get some halibut or some crab, perhaps lots of blueberries. Flash has a garden. It's a good way to go. This is rugged country out here and uh, one of the things you'll notice right here is this wasn't here last year. We've got this big old uh, landslide that goes all the way down to the river and it's about a, about four or five feet from our trail. Uh, one of my jobs was to come early before Memorial Day and clear the trail. I kind of enjoy doing that. So all the blowdowns that occurred over the winter. I brought my chainsaw down and, and cut those down. I'm um, going to show you some beautiful lupin here too. Early on at the top there were some roses and uh, right now I want to show you some lupin. Okay, a little bit about the amazing Copper River. It's 290 miles long, drops about 12 feet a mile. It drains about 26,000 square miles and it's considered the 10th largest river in America. Beautiful river, dangerous river. A lot of people, um, people who dip net or slip into the river can be pretty, pretty fatal if you fall in this river. And every year, it seems like one or two people die. They fall in the river and uh, the silt collects in their clothes and they drown. So when I'm down here, Especially at my age, got to be really, really careful. I have a saying with my son. I said, you know, we don't have to be stupid. Let's not do anything stupid. So before we uh, we make a move or expose ourselves to danger, we kind of think about it. You may have heard me mention before. I learned from the Yupik elders this concept of don't follow your first thought which basically means don't be impulsive. Think things through before you commit to an action. And I know that can, uh, that doesn't always work. You know, if you got a bear charging you, it's, you, you can't really launch into a Hamlet-like soliloquy. To be or not to be, or to bear or not to bear, you gotta think quickly. You know, you gotta go straight to the reptilian brain. But oftentimes, Oftentimes you can think things through. So we'll be really careful down there. Lessen our exposure. We've got a fish wheel that's moving and cranking. We don't want to get hit by that. And then the Copper River is always swift. So we want to be careful around that. We've got life preservers, which we don't want to put too much comfort in them because we, first of all, we just don't want to get washed in the river. It's cold, it's silty and uh, it's dangerous. It's a beautiful river but it's also very dangerous. Okay, I'm getting near the bottom here and uh, I'll probably check in with you again soon. We'll take a look and see what's in our holds, fish holds, and see what kind of work we've got cut out for us. It's glad I brought my son. It'll be fun to have him haul fish up this hill. His job, I told him, is to do the grunt work, while my job is to think the big thoughts. I don't know if he's too keen on that philosophy, but, well, that's what happens. That's kind of the reason, one of the reasons I like having a son, is he can do some of the grunt work for me. Well, there's our first sight of the fish wheel, and it's good to see that it's still running. 
sometimes uh, might get log jams down there. I'm getting really close to the trail, or I'm sorry, getting really close to the shore. Fish wheel seems to be running well. Here's your first view of it. You can see the paddles which which push the fish wheel counterclockwise. And then the baskets scoop up the salmon. They're a little bit tilted and they drop into the box in theory. I've come down here before and I've seen the, that box completely full. So it must be over 150 fish and the fish just hit the top of the box and they fall back in the river. Okay, well there's the fish wheel behind me. And uh, one of the things we check out, we're always alert for bears. Though I haven't run into a bear down here at this fish wheel. I've heard of other people who've had problems with bears. You think about it, you got 50 or 60 fish. And for a hungry bear, that's like kind of like going to Costco on a shopping spree almost. You know, getting the, all that protein in one location without the work. It's a, it would be a good deal for a bear. Okay, there's the fish wheel again, and you can see we're going to take a look right in that hold, that box. And then uh, over here is part of the hold to the right of this little platform. I'm just going to have to step right out in the river. It's pretty shallow and uh, seems to be the safest thing. I don't want to get near the wheel. That's dangerous. And uh, we'll see what we got. Okay. Um, yeah, I can... I see a few fish. It's not as many as I've seen before. You can see them swirling in there. And uh, look over here. We can't really see a lot, so I don't think we have too many. I can see we've got a few in here. There we go. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my fish glove so I have some, so I can get a good grip on the fish and then uh, put them in a bucket. You know, it's fishing. We came by, uh, water's up a little bit. We only caught only caught two fish in the fish wheel. And uh, last evening we caught about 20, and that's just how it goes. So I lowered the fish wheel a little bit. I felt like uh, salmon, red salmon and king salmon, they like to swim close to the bottom. And so I lowered the fish wheel because maybe a lot of the fish were swimming by. We'll come back this evening and check it out. But here's the two beautiful reds we caught today. You can see them right there. They're kind of lonely. So, uh, like I said, last night we caught about 20, and uh, we were kind of expecting the same today. So we lowered the fish wheel, and uh, we're going to fillet these bad boys and head home and come back this evening. Well, I've traveled three times to the fish wheel, and the first time got about 20 fish, 20 reds, and second time two more, and third time two more. River came up really high, and so we shut the fishing wheel down. We'll go back when the water level goes down and give it a shot. The Copper River rules. It decides, it deals all the cards out here as far as salmon go. And uh, anyway, I'll show you what I'm cooking for dinner tonight. 
Basically, Copper River Reds are known as Alaska's filet mignon. Well, thank you for coming fishing with me. And until we meet again, live wildly, my friends. You can see the fat content coming up right there.